oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I don't believe. The music is dragging, the sound is dragging. Cut, 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 I'm being attacked. This is some intergalactic fuckery. I don't believe. It's intergalactic. It's everywhere. I can't escape it. I can't escape it, y'all. I'm trying. I've been trying. I've been trying. But it's just growing around me. But, yo, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Right? Because only, only in fuckery can we find out what we're made of. Right? It's only in the times of fuckery we can really see what our character is. What we have been building our lives upon. Right? And it's in this fuckery that I will shine and I will grow and I will... Prosper. I will conquer this fuckery. I will conquer the buffoonery. And I will conquer. I will conquer the white magic. That's right. The white magic is confusion. Right? It's causing confusion in people's lives. So, hey, before we even jump off, before we even jump off, right? First, I want to send a shout out to my sponsors. Right? You know, first off, I want to thank those people that's listening because I have a few people listening and, and that's all it takes, man. Um, I, I had a beautiful, I had one of my beautiful daughters call me today um, and um, she, she, she told me, she gave me some ideas about the show and she let me know she listened when she has an opportunity. And, you know, I've been, I've been knew she was listening because she told me a long time ago, she said, I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey. So I want to send shots out. To uh to Yolanda, you know what I'm saying? Um, so hey, so this 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 is what the, this is what this is about. It's about building families. It's about passing on legacy. It's about it's about pushing ourselves beyond what this world told us we could have. Right? We supposed to be we supposed to work jobs from nine to five. We supposed to only make so much. It's, you know, everything is supposed to have a ceiling, and it's only so much when. The possibilities out there. You know what I'm saying? The only way that Brother Hot Tim is supposed to ball is that I'm supposed to be out here selling dope or convincing young dudes to go out here and sell dope. You know what I'm saying? This that's that's not the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is that this whole world is just waiting for us. It's like our oyster and it's waiting to be plucked. All we have to do is follow our passion. One of my passion it's folk tales. Another one is Proverbs. And y'all like, Brother Tim, how is that a passion? Because in college, in college, I found a book called The African Openness to the Tree of Life, and it saved my life. It saved my life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just the wisdom that my ancestors was able to bring to me. You know what I'm saying? It saved my life. So before we jump off into the folk tales tonight, because it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one, right? And for some of y'all, it's going to be a life changer because this may be your first show for some of y'all this is going to be a reminder because um you know there's only so many themes that aesop could, could carry but there's an infinite amount infinite amount of ways that he could bring it across right i want y'all to remember go back and research the history of aesop realize who and what he was right realize who and what he was all right so you know, like I said, I'm still in the household. I'm working on getting my own studio, but hey, it'll come in time. But those that want to support, let me give you away right now. Yeah, so uh, uh, pay attention to the commercial break. The word is spreading. More and more people are switching to Ambit Energy. Well, one of my neighbors switched, and then I switched. Now the whole neighborhood has Ambit. Who doesn't want to save money? The word is spreading. Switching to Ambit Energy is rewarding in more ways than one. I signed up and got a travel reward. That's nice. Oh, I get to save on energy and on travel? There's a cruise for two out there just a few thousand kilowatts away. I can almost smell the sunscreen. The word is spreading. Ambit Energy even lets you earn free energy. When I get 15 friends to switch, I get free energy. I have 15 friends. At least I think I do. Hey, I'd be telling people to switch to Ambit anyway. If you'd like to switch to Ambit Energy, listen to the following contact information closely. Then spread the word.
All right, listen up closely. Now, those that want to support the journey, we are an official energy company. We roll up under the banner of Ambit, and we are able to provide you electricity. Now, this is the best part about this deal, right? Check this out. This is the best part about this deal. When we provide you with energy, right, one of two things happen. One, not one or two, two things happen. One, we can save you money on your electric bill. Right now, we are doing like 5.7, you might somewhere around there, right, per kilowatt hour. And we also could provide gas. But every time you pay your bill, you get two more things, right? When you pay your bill, you save money. And then secondly, you know that a portion of your money is going towards some nation building activities because I'm I'm involved in nation building activities all the way around. My life is filled with that, right? Thirdly, when you pay your bill, you receive travel reward points. So this means that one, you're getting two things. You're helping the community and second, you're, you're helping yourself, right? So what better deal can I offer you? I can't offer nobody anything better. So yo, Check us out on Ambit. Now, for those that are interested, and some of you might be old school, you'd be like, Brother Tim, let me talk to you about this in person. I want to see the presentation. I want to see what it's about, right? Because not only can you come on as a customer, but you also could come on as a consultant, and you could sell it. Now, also, this is the other bound part. Some of y'all know friends. If you got 15 friends, right, that you want to bring in and you bring them in, you get your energy for free. I'm just saying. Now, so here we go. Now, if those old school ones that want to try to hit me up, hit me up at 614-594-9422. We could talk about it. We could set up a date. We could, I could show you the presentation or I could, you know what I'm saying, I'll get you the information. For those of you that are a little bit more computer savvy, hit me up at Giami Journey. Um, Giami Journey dot five, energy 526com right? And then also, those of you that are on Facebook right now, go to Giami Journey Energy. Just that simple. Type in G Y E dash N Y A M E journey. J O U R N E Y energy. <laughs> Boom. Go to the sign up. You ain't got to sign up, but the sign up gives you the ability to see how much money we can save you. That's all I want to do. I want to save you money. Let me save you money and let's get some building going. All right. Now, also, now we about to hit the show. So I'm being joined right now. I had to put them on. Um, I had to put him on a, a mute because he was eating or something in the background. But uh, I'm being joined today by one of my good friends, uh, Mr. Charles Trailer, an elder from the community. He's, I've known him for years, and um, we're gonna have a real good. We're gonna chop it up on this on this uh, uh, on this folk tale today. So uh, I'm putting him back on. Can you hear me, Charles? Yes, I sure do. Hotel. 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 Um, let me try to turn it up a little bit. All right, cool, cool. I want to make sure you come in clear so I can hear you. All right, here we go. So, um, for those that are new, what we do is we shoot out the problem, we shoot out the folk tale, we chop it up, and we look at it, and we try to find a way to make it work in our life. Then, then, right, then if we could find any current events to plug this information in with, we will. So basically, we call it wisdom mining because our ancestors have basically left us the answers to all the problems in the world. They just formed them and crystallized them. I call it crystallized wisdom. That's why we got to go mining. We got to get through the dirt, uh, get down to the very compounds of what our ancestors was trying to leave us. We're going to break it down to the final compound. You know what I'm saying? And still, we won't get all the treasure because some of y'all may come up with something different. Now, I want y'all to understand this. You can hit me up on the, the line right now, 614-594, my fault, 614-556-4535. Or you can hit me up through the uh, council that I have on um, Spreaker. You can send me a direct message. But the point is this. If you're too shy to say what you have to say, find another way to get it to me. You can text me. You can email me. I, I will I will share the information because this is the, this is the issue here. You never know what you might what you have to say might how it might affect somebody else. You never know. You might be sitting on the very words that might save somebody's life out there. That might change somebody's life. So stop being shy. Stop being scared. 
and stop holding on to that wisdom. All right. You ready, Charles? Yeah. All right. So now, first things first, I got to put on my freestyle music. So excuse me for a second here. I can't even, oh man, I'm gonna turn that, oh Lord have mercy. Y'all got to excuse me, everything for some reason is dragging. Like for example, I got to talk in advance and I got to say a whole bunch of stuff and I have to push the button and I have to wait, then I say something like, you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. You know what I'm saying? This is a heart of a Simba production. Come on, Simba. technology. Where we strive to throw up those old paradigms. So now, it's about to get down and dirty. So Charles, jump in, cause you know how I am, man. If you don't, if, if you don't, if you don't step in the light, you won't get shined on, man. Okay. The name of this story is called "The Crab and the Fox." Crab and a fox. So here we go. A crab, forsaking the seashore, chose a neighboring green meadow as its feeding ground. A fox came across him and being very hungry, ate him up. Just as he was on the point of being eaten, the crab said, I well deserve my fate. For what business had I on the land, when by my nature and habits I am only adapted for the sea? Um, now, the the I'm going to read that it again, was, then I'll come back to the moral that they got. Say it, I'm sorry, go ahead. That was strong right there, man. Oh, dude. I mean, I got a, I, I mean, I got a book full of them, dude. I, I mean, I'm doing whole workshops just on folk tales. Because like I said, man, our ancestors gave us all the answers to all the problems we're dealing with. All we got to do is be willing to roll up our sleeves and do the mental work. They crystallized their wisdom and they dropped them in folk tales and proverbs and quotes. All we got to do is do the work. All we got to do is think, right? So one more time, I'm going to read it one more time and then we're going to jump into the conversation. And this time I'm going to read the more that, that they got on it. I want you to understand that um, there's different translations for this. So you go online right now, you can find a whole nother way that this one came across and a whole nother uh, moral to the tale. But the point is, what is it that you getting out of it? I don't want you to, I don't want you, I, you can feel me if you want. You can feel Brother Charles if you want. If Brother Devin get on here, you can feel him. And if Sister Janice get on here, you can feel her. And anybody else, you can feel him. But I want you to feel what it says to you because that's the most important thing. Because oftentimes we get caught up into in the rhetoric of other people. When in fact, you need to get caught up in your own rhetoric. You need to get caught up in your own. You need to know how you feel. You need to know how things affect you so that you can really bring the change in your life that you want. All right, so here we go. A crab forsaking the seashore chose a neighboring green meadow as its feeding ground. A fox came across him and being very hungry, ate him up. Just as he was on the point of being eaten, the crab said, I will deserve my fate. For what business had I on the land when by my nature and habits I am only adapted for the sea? And the moral is contentment with our lot is an element of happiness. But also contentment is a double-edged sword, so we got to be aware of that. So of course that's going to pop up in a conversation. So we're looking at the story. Those of you that may want to join the conversation, hit us up at 614-556-4535. Um, next. So, Charles, you want me to jump in or you want to share some words on it? Yeah, you know, because when, you know, when I listened to it, what jumped out at me was, you know, that when you know, when you're in the crowd that he had left the friendly confines of his natural habitat and he thought 
that well the proverbial you know grass was green on the other side but he but, but he also thought that he could um and and sometimes we we are at fault because we today is determining you as getting out of your lane right you know and and so um we um cross over to somebody else's lane but we don't know we don't know you know that you know um lane and i always say this is that there is two programs that exist yours and somebody else's and what the crab did was the crab got into um someone else's program mm. and he knew and, and and he knew he was wrong and he didn't even blame you know um the fox because he knew he was wrong so he accepted his faith he accepted his faith right yeah so now because like many of us one of the things i'm saying about this because like working with young people working at working with grown folks we see people often doing this you know what I'm saying? Because as, as black people, because think about this. As a people, we were, we have certain things that we shine at. And in a, in a lot of instances, we move away from those things because we've been told that we're not supposed to be good at those things. We've been, we've been told that because it's easy for us, we need to move away for it, from it. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? And, and as you say, we get out our lane. Right, and and, and and looking at looking at us, we move away from what we're good at, and we move into the meadow, into somebody else's meadow, and eventually right. other people come and eat us up. For example, you look at our community. Our community is like a big crab out of the water, because you got Arabs coming, they see the crab, and they coming in and they're eating us up. You got the Indians coming, they see us and they eat us up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody around yep. us is encroaching upon us because we're not in our lane. We're not in mm. our we're not where we are and we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? So you right. know, the whole piece is we got to find that. And when we find that we we will plug into our power because the fox could never eat the crab if the crab was in his own environment. And and, and also to answer that how Tim, you know, you look at it from the perspective of us as black people in America, we, prior to our integration, we were doing more for ourselves, you know, than we ever have done. We had our own commerce. We had our own doctors and and, and lawyers and hospitals. We had our own, we were self-sufficient, you know, when when we had to do this for ourselves. And then we thought that we might be better if we integrate with white people and um, and become part of you know what we thought was a better life for us as a people. And we and we and we and we, and we sold this dream of being next to white people and integration to generations of our people. And even today, we can't live without white people. We can't. And and, and and it's the, the sad part for me is it's like we forsaking where we come from, we're forsaking who we are. That's what they say about yeah. the crab. He forsaken right. the seashore. Yep. You know what I'm saying? How can you yeah. how can you move? I mean, if we take it if we take it from the realm of the people and bring it down to the realm of the individual by forsaking what you come from, right. how can you ever move towards greatness? And we have been programmed. That what we are and what we have is not enough. You know what I'm saying? Right. The crab I, I, was dissatisfied with being a crab. The crab right. wanted to be a land dweller. The crab was looking at what was going on in the land, and he felt that what was going on on the land was better than what was going on in the sea. And, and, and we we weren't satisfied with the pyramids. We had to move into the projects. Mm. Right. Right. <laughs> we, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, and, and I hear black folks, I was on the radio the other day, I heard some black folks defending the project as such a proud place to grow up in. It's a proud place. It's a proud. See, because one, we get to grow up within the realm that somebody has prepared for us. 
right? And we have been convinced, because because I'm going to tell you what the projects is, right? The projects are an aquarium. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Because uh-huh. in the projects, the projects, when you look at it, it's just like an aquarium. aquarium. It's a confined area that, uh, uh, for uh, it's, uh, according to our story, where aquatic beings can exist on land, and they feed the crabs just enough. They feed the aquatic animals just enough to survive. Uh-huh. Right, right. But we uh-huh. remain uh-huh. close, and most of us don't even want to leave the comfort of the aquarium. As a matter of fact, if you try to talk the crabs out of leaving the aquarium, they'll right. think you're crazy. They'll think you're crazy. And, I, and I'm going to add something to that. Um, the projects to black folks is what the reservations are to the Native Americans. Mm. You know, and the other thing was that when the, when the uh, idea and the concept of projects came about in this country, right here in Columbus, Ohio, was one of the first ones they call it a project because that's what it was, a project to see how many people you can put in a densely populated area with limited resources and you can predict, you can predict the outcomes. Hmm. The projects worked. That's why they replicated them all over this country. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, but I mean, we really got to look at that type of stuff, right? Yeah. So now. Yeah. We, we we go back to the we go we, we bring it back around to the story. And mm-hmm. a crab forsaking the seashore chose a neighboring green meadow as its feeding ground. A fox came across him and being very hungry ate him up. See, because we gotta realize that we provide we as individuals provide sustenance for others. You know what I'm right. saying? You know what I'm saying? What and you know, and eat somebody up is symbolic. It doesn't mean that they're cannibalizing on us. You know what I'm saying? At least now physically. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, the, right. the fox was able to get use out of the crab. The fox mm-hmm. was hungry. The fox lacked some skills, so he put the crab to work. That's a form of eating. When, when you, as a, when, how can I put it? When you work for somebody else, they in a sense are sucking off your energy. Isn't that the same mm-hmm. thing as consuming? You know what I'm saying? Right. Ain't that what you do when you when you eat something, you consume it so that you can use this energy. So when you right. are employed by others, you in a sense are being consumed by that individual that employs you or that group right. that employs you, right? So now right. in a sense, right. the fox was the fox was very hungry because in America they're very hungry. Although they say they don't want us, they're very hungry and they know that we make we make a good meal. We always right. gonna want to work for them. You know what I'm saying? And they energize that they energize that consumer piece in you with all of the TV and radio ads, you know, for you to go out and consume goods and services that somebody else has created. Don't forget. You know, Black Friday, um, Christmas, you know, every year it's like, you know, Christmas, you know, shopping happens earlier and earlier every year. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're gonna start seeing Christmas stuff in June. Hey. Because they ener- because they energizing that consumer, you know, uh, that, that energy that we get as consumers, super consumers to go out and buy. Now, but what's what's even oh, man, listen man. What what's even what's even crazy, right? Is that they um we got to go deeper than just the TV because a lot of us uh-huh. we, we we look at we look at the programming that comes through the television. We look at the programming, right? It's called right. programming. We listen to the programming on the radio, right? But right. we don't talk about the major hub of programming in our communities. Uh-huh. The major hub of programming it starts in the schools. You see what yeah. I'm saying? The schools are, in a sense, the 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 the, the um the one of the key points. It, it's like it's like last week, man. I keep telling people if you didn't hear last week's, and the title of last week's was "The Tree 
the trees and the axe. If you didn't hear last week's story, you have to go back and hear it because that is a liberation tale. That is, that tells you how they're attacking us. They're, they're not only just dividing and conquering, they're snatching our young. And in taking our young, they're educating our young not to be crabs in this story. To go and continue going to the meadow so that you become easy prey for the fox. Right. We're educating them for that. We're training right. them for that. Every day, sit down, shut up, be quiet. Raise your hand. Don't move. That's what we're training them for. We're training yep. them to go to the matter. We're training them to go and beg somebody else. We're training them to hunt food that they're not capable of capable of getting. Because think about it. What what can a crab catch? Crabs walk sideways. I mean, right. what the hell can a crab catch on land? You know what I'm saying? This crab actually thought that it could go to the meadow and catch something and survive. It didn't actually. It didn't even say that the damn that the damn crab moved from the sea. It didn't say it moved to the meadow. It said it chose a neighboring green meadow as its feeding ground. So to get its very sustenance for its survival, it chose to go someplace. Where it couldn't, where it was impossible for it to eat. That sounds like a lot of our lives. Many of us are, are are reaching for wealth. Many of us are reaching for security. Many of us are reaching for happiness in places that it is impossible for us to get it. Mm. You see, know this, this is why I say these folk tales aren't just for kids. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm sitting up here, see, because a lot of people, I got to keep reminding you, I got to remind y'all, Aesop was in the same position that many of, matter of fact, I ain't say, Aesop was in the same position that all of us were in, we're in, mm -hmm. he was, he was in captivity, so he had time to think about this, he was oppressed, he had time to think about these stories, and I keep asking, who, who did he lay these stories down for? And the crab, and the crab. Somehow, the crab convinced itself that there was a better feeding ground than the, than, the, than, the, than the feeding ground that it was in. So the crab believed that that he was going to be more successful going into this meadow than he was where he was at. And that's the way a lot of us are. We think that we're going to be more success, successful if we assimilate and through what is called the dominant culture, and if we if we stay and be nation builders and 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 and, 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 and help our own community, we feel we can we feel and we convince ourselves that I can do more for myself and my people if I move if I if I go here. But that you fell you fall right into the trap of the fox when you think that way. Mm. Mm. You you become a sitting prey. You know what I'm saying? Because look, yep. look, I want see because most of us we don't, you know, when the fox is eating us up, most of us don't have the sense. Well, actually, maybe when the fox is eating us up, and I want you to understand the last words because Aesop often do this when some of the characters run up into their comeuppance when they receive their reciprocity for their bad decisions. They often reflect and only in that moment are they faced with truth. Mm -hmm. And it gives us an opportunity to look at the truth before we get devoured. Right. This, right. I mean, this, this, this we, could, we could call it a system, we could say thing, whatever you want to call it, this thing's designed to eat up the only thing that you have, and that's time. It's eating mm -hmm. up your time. I'm taking your time building something for me and my children. You know what I'm saying? But check this out. Right. This is what the crab said. I will deserve my faith. Think about that. The crab right. took responsibility at the end of his life for his thing. This is the lesson for you. I will deserve my faith. For what business had I on the land? When by my nature and habits, I am only adapted for the sea. 
Mm-hmm. We are the only people that condemn a crab for not being able to hunt like a fox. We are the only people that condemn, you know what I'm saying, condemn a fish because he can't walk on the land. You know what I'm saying? But he only, but he only espoused that wisdom when he was in the clutches of the fox. Mm. <laughs> and eight, I mean, think about the design of the story. The story's designed to evoke a certain emotion from you so that you can avoid this. Right. You can avoid right. you can avoid this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hunt right. where you are best. Go where you mm-hmm. can go where you can be king. Right. Go. Let, right. You know what I'm saying? So as a people, we haven't decided we haven't placed our people where they need to be. As a matter of fact, some of us feel we got to do everything. I supposed to be good at everything. See, and that gets us away from our culture. Because in our culture, see, maybe in maybe in your Western culture, right? Maybe in West Asian mm-hmm. culture, they might have the jack of all trade mode. I don't know. But in my studies of African culture, in my studies of our culture, I notice, I notice a culture of mastery. It wasn't jack of right. all trades right. that built the pyramid. Right. It wasn't jacks of all trades that was the hunters. It wasn't jacks of all trades that was the farmers. It was master farmers, master builders, mm-hmm. master hunters. As a matter of fact, I told people a while ago because I was studying up on the Spartans. I'm still kind of every now and then when I get an opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Because you know they keep us busy where we at, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was studying right. the Spartans. And one of the things I found about the Spartans was that the guy that that found the culture the way that we know of the Spartans when he left Sparta and went around the world at that time what they considered the world to see what cultures he could take some good qualities from one of the cultures he went to was Egypt and what he took from Egypt was the fact that the Egypt that in Egypt they had people who specialized in things so he built his whole concept of the military force from what he saw in Egypt because you didn't have somebody plowing the field and then going to war. No, they had professional warriors in Egypt. They had professional builders in Egypt. They had professional potters in Egypt. They had masters. And that's the yeah. thing that he brought back. He only brought back the fact that, you know, he brought back the, the, the whole warrior piece. You know what I'm saying? Right. But he ain't bring back the rest of the mastery. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The other parts. But the, the point that I'm trying to make is that we, unlike, because the crab didn't focus on the points that it was mastering. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it, it didn't, where, where it was had a natural inclination to lean towards mastery, it moved away from that and went to do something that for it would be a lot more, I ain't going to say impossible, but it would, it would be a lot more it will it will be a lot more complicated than for the fox. And let me and let me and let, and let me say this. And, and, and I don't know how popular, you know, this is going to be or how people go tell about it. But you look at Malcolm and Martin, and let's think about this for a minute. They were crabs, and the fox killed them because they wanted to. Um, explore in the metal and and, and 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 create, you know, a, a, a another, you know, place, you know, for um, black people to expand into. But the fox killed them, but it killed them as a message for any other crabs who dare to, you know, um, wade over into the metal. Mm. Mm. Because because you think about it, um, every never there, there's not been another crab that has risen up, you know, to um, challenge the fox as Martin as Malcolm and Martin did. Now, but I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna ask this question. Yeah, the fox can't rule in the sea. What you say? The fox can't rule in the sea. 
I'm, right. I'm just like, you That's know what I'm right. saying? I'm like, let, right. Lee right. Fox, I'm like, Lee the Fox where he is. We need to see, because right. this, this, as far as nation building, right? This is why I'm talking about the whole mastery piece for me. One of the things that I'm seeing is that every culture has certain things that they hold on to that is sacred to their culture. And in it being sacred to their culture, they will only purchase those things from individuals within their culture. Mm hmm my question for black folks is, what are the things, what are the sacred things that we that we purchase? Right. Only right. from our culture. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. We oh, spread man. the love. We spread the love. Wow. You know what I'm saying? What if, what if we never bought shea butter from anyone? And you know what I'm saying? I mean, because, you know, you got all, you know, got all the dark. Yeah. We, we be using right. a lot of shea butter. What if we only bought shea butter from, from us? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It couldn't, in no form or fashion, could that go through their hands. We have to produce it from the beginning to the end. So that would connect us with. See, if we had one thing that we all could agree on, well, hey, we don't need to buy that from nobody else because they can't, they can't do that better than us. They can't do that. They can't do that. Look, Chinese people don't buy Chinese food from nobody but Chinese. Oh hell no. You you can't you know what I'm saying? If they call if they if they call a Chinese dude at an African store buying some damn rice, they'll chop his damn head off. That's right. Because that's betrayal. That's betrayal. We the only ones that believe that we need to spread the love. Right. You know what I'm saying? But not realizing that by spreading the love, you can't love nobody. You have to focus right. your love and the love that drips off. Because the love love is like light. When you fill it up in a, in a certain place, it's going to spill over into the rest of the world. We love, you know, we, we love the world better when we're loving ourselves because this is the fact that I have come to, that especially in America, but in the world, until, 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 until we folk here start to rise, nobody in the world is going to rise. Nope. nope. You know, when they talk about yeah. it, when they say that, that rising tide, Lifts all boats. Right. We are that damn tired. We we the tired. We the tired. But you know what? We didn't gave so much. We didn't gave the world so much love. We don't. We we, we sometimes feel like we don't have enough for ourselves. Mm. And that is the issue. You know what I'm saying? We the crab. Yep. You know what I'm saying? This story. Uh, we the crab, and we just we just out here. Anybody want to join the conversation, hit us up at 614-556-4535. I'm being joined by the brilliant, masterful speaker, Mr. Charles Trailer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, um, feel free to hit us up. If, you, if you're too shy, then um, then um, go on and send a message in, uh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, we're we conversating. We're chopping it up. You know what I'm saying? So... Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I, I have, and this is a, um, this is a sidebar. I have a real fox that is in my backyard, in the woods, in my backyard. And on Saturday, I came home and I looked out in the backyard, and he was laying out in the backyard, so much the sun. He was actually asleep, and and I made a little noise, and I woke him up, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and we stared at each other you know, for a couple minutes. And and I and I it was a out and that fox after two minutes put his head back down and went back to sleep. So what did you what do you think that fox thought of me standing there? Because you weren't moving, I mean because right. you weren't coming towards him, you weren't no threat. I wasn't no threat. You weren't no threat. You know what I'm saying? I, that's, I mean, and that's sort of like actually, you that's that's a whole see. Man, our ancestors speak with us with symbols. That stare down competition is the same stare down the stare down competition that you just described. The stare down competition that we got with the rest of the country. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But you know what we do? Yep. We get up and we march. The police is staring us down, and we right. ain't doing shit. So they gonna just lay down and beat them. Uh, it'll be another. It'll be another one of our kids murdered next week. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. we ain't doing nothing. You know, they did the stare down. They comfortable. I'm going to go back to sleep. You ain't going to do nothing. Excuse my name. Right. You ain't going to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Just like with Donald Trump. He called the bluff. You know what I'm saying? Right. We got old white dudes going off and, and, and sucker punching young black dudes. 
What? Right. In yeah. what century? What century is this? Yeah. You know, 75 Hold on. I gotta put on I gotta put on my fuckery alarm. I'm sorry, hold on. That was pure fuckery. You know what I'm saying? This, <laughs> we gotta stop getting in the stare down with these motherfuckers. We gotta stop it. You allowed to cuss on right. the show, Charles, but you know I understand you you a consummate professional. You're not like Brother High Tim. <laughs> I'm a loose cannon. I admit it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I you know give you all pay, man. So, but the, the, the whole piece is we're staring down the fox, and the fox right. know that we're not gonna do nothing. So he just lays back down on your territory. Yep. See, because yep. you know, I, and you know, because yesterday on the show when I got mad, I got upset. I I had to cut off. I had to cut off. I had to cut off the radio because I had to cut off the. I had to cut off my show because I got so upset because. I hear black folks talk about community, but you can't have community if you don't own the territory. There's no community yeah. if the community don't own the territory. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, we got all these big, big churches, but these churches are not building communities because actually the true hub of nation building, just like with the civil rights movement, should always have been our house of spirituality. But our house of spirituality have become a house of pimping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pimpin' says yep. pimpin' been pimpin' pimpin'. You know what I'm saying? And we got to, we got to be very clear. You know what I'm saying? Because it's sort of like, you know, because spirituality is one of those places that's water for the crab. Yep. But we done allowed it to be warped and, and shaped. You know what I'm saying? Because we've been trying to fit into other people's model of how our spirituality should be. Think about wow. it. Wow. Even in yep. our churches. Our pastors now have to go to institutions that have been established by our by our our out front enemies. They're not shy about it. Right. You tell me, you tell me, name a name a black seminary, you know, that black preachers go to to become preachers. Is it one? I know. <laughs> All right. Know. Hold on. Those listeners out there. We're looking for a black seminary. You know what I'm saying? Because is there something wrong with having a black seminary? You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for a black seminary. Is there a black seminary out there? You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, I want to ask this. Who certifies the black seminary? See, because, you know, it, one of the things I learned coming up through the Afrocentric community in Columbus, it don't mean shit if you don't, if you are not part of the controlling body that certifies right. what it is that right. you say you are. Right. So who certifies it? See, because when you think about it, the ones that legitimate everything in our community is the fox. So in a sense, we right. got a fox legitimizing what determines what a crab is. We don't allow the fox to just take over. So now the crabs think they're supposed to be hunting no metals. And now they just think that's the thing, that's the way they're supposed to be. So now all of the crabs are running on the metal. You know what I'm saying? And we're yelling at the little crabs because the little crabs like, yo, I want to go to the water. No, 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 Crabby. Get over here. Get to this metal. This is where you're supposed to be. Sit still. You know what I'm saying? We're going to teach you how to be a crab. But I want to go to the water. Wait, 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 homie. We don't, and for, and for, and we for don't get wet. Moment, do, you think, do you think that for a brief moment the crab forgot that it was a crab? I know for a fact the crab forgot that it's crab because let's bring it back to our people, right? Right. Check this out. The crabs wear wigs. 85% of the right. crabs wear wigs. Wear right. false hair. Trying to get another per- trying to get the hair like the like the fox. They don't want right. to be crabs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know the crab forgot it was a crab. The crabs don't even like swimming. <laughs> That's right. The crabs is trying to eat the food that a fox eats. It got, right. it got, the crab got, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the crab forgot. You know what I'm saying? But this is why Aesop left us, left us that saving grace. Because he said contentment with our lot is an element of happiness. Mm. You'll never be happy until you find contentment in who exactly. and what you are. That's right, that's right. But most of us have been taught our whole lives that we, what we are is not enough. We got to fit in. Charles, you got to go and get a job, baby. 
Oh, right. Hot Jim, you got to go yeah. and get that degree so that you can get a good job, baby. Yeah. Rather than people saying, hey, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Fuck them jobs. You need to go and get, you need to start a business. We need business. We need you. We don't need you to find a job. We need you to make right. about seven. Because you got two retarded right. cousins that you're going to have to take care of for the rest of their lives. Mm. You understand what I'm mm. saying? Oh, yeah. You know, you know, because I look at that little boy that we was talking about, the boy that, that, that did the shooting. 18 right. years old. Tattoos all over his face. Begging for somebody to see him. Begging for somebody to hear him. You know what I'm saying? Not justifying right. his fuckery. But the point that right. I'm trying to say is that this boy was trying to be seen. He was trying to be seen so much that eventually it led to him yelling with gunfire. Yep. Now for a brief yep. moment he got the attention he wants, not real maybe not even realizing that he just took his life. Yeah, his own life. He took his own life. He took his own life. Because he wanna be a he yep. trying to be a fox. Yep. He trying to be yep. or or my fault. Maybe he trying to be a crab, but we just can't see it. Mm. Yeah, that's that. That's another way of looking at it. You know what I'm saying? It's like he like I, I want to go to the water, but everybody been telling me that I'm not supposed to go to the water. But I'm dry and I need to get to the water, and I can't get to the water. You know what I'm Because do you even? I mean, do we even realize that the way we live in our lives right now is not even in sync with who we are? The way we have been taught to live over here is not the way the rest of the world is. Right. You know, and 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 maybe, maybe he was, maybe he was killing everything in him that he don't like. Hey, or, or I mean, I mean, yeah, I agree. See, because my piece is, I one, I I don't want nobody out there thinking I'm justifying that fucking tree. As a matter of fact, right. I'm calling that, I'm calling that out. That's that West Asian. Uh, that's that that's that fuckery, uh, buffoonery, and that white magic. So I'm put on the European siren to let you know that was some European fuckery. Right the European, this European siren let you know that that's that fuckery. But you know, necessarily, it's not their fault. Because right. Europeans gonna be Europeans. West Asians gonna yeah. be West Asians. We just gotta be okay. who the fuck we are. We can't be mad at them for, like, for example, no. it's like black folks being mad at Donald Trump and going and protesting and shit. Let Donald Trump be who the fuck he is. Let him be. Right. A, let him be. Let him be a white, a orange white man looking like a pumpkin with a wig on. Let him be who he yeah. gonna be. You let know what I'm saying? Right. If we right. were who we, who, if we were who we really are, mm -hmm. we wouldn't even be affected. Wouldn't be affected. Wouldn't even be affected. You know what I'm saying? Right. We, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm with I'm with uh what is Claude Anderson? Politicians, politicians, you know what I'm saying? You either got to buy them, and if you can't buy them, you rent them or lease them until you get right. what you want. Until you get what you want. That's but right. we can't do that as a community. Why? Because we don't see ourselves as a community, because we're trying to fit into the overall fabric of America, not realizing that everybody else that's fitting into the fabric of America. <laughs> First, first, first come together as a group to fit into the fabric of America. We are in the sense right. of the string that's holding the quilt together. Right? Now let me now let me now let me now let me also add to this to get back to the crab. If the crab would have just stayed in the water, it would still be alive. Yes it would. When when we when we jump out there and try to go and fit into other people's metals. They wait, the fox is waiting for you because the fox ain't gonna come off the territory and come in yours to get you. The fox is gonna wait until you come out of the place that that is protecting you, the place that is your sanctuary, the place that is providing everything you need to be protected the fox is going to sit there and wait patiently, and he's going because he knows you're enticed. 
by the energy of consumerism. And when you come out of your protective area, that's when the fox pops on you because guess what? When you come out of your area, you're in his area. You're in his area. You're in his area. You're in his territory. Right, that's right. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, you trying to run space on his territory. You, you pay yeah. him. He, you got to pay him to be on his territory, or he will eat your ass up. That's he sure will. You know what I'm saying? I mean, sure I mean, really. Will. I mean, because really, we this is a you know what I'm saying. It sounds like a fable, but we really living in this shit. If yeah, we are. If 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 we do not pay to occupy their space. They will right. remove us by force. They will devour us. They will put us in a situation where we could be reduced to slavery. We let, will let be reduced to slavery. That's what jail and, is. And they put people and, that don't pay their bills and shit like that in jail. In Philadelphia, they bombed the house of the move people because they because they were squatters and they didn't pay any bills, any rent, anything. They These people were peaceful. They bombed them people because they because they weren't paying. Hold on, hold on. For, for the European or the West Asian, if you ain't paying, you ain't about peace. That's right. That's right. You got to understand. That's right. You got to understand the nature of the fox. If you ain't right. paying, if you ain't paying, you ain't about peace. See, because I'm one. Because right. this is what I came. I, you know, because sometimes this is one of the reasons I, 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 I love the show because. I, I, a lot of times I'm, I'm talking to myself So I get to really um, um, Think about some of the crazy shit That I be saying But I started thinking I said Isn't it strange That these motherfuckers Will up uh, Big up Martin Luther King Talk about the non-violence movement And all this And how we should be And strive to be you know? non-violent And these motherfuckers Have historically been The most violent The most violent Violent individuals on this planet at this right, very right. moment when they saying that we should resolve all our shit in peace, we had the biggest military. So I'm asking, so I'm gonna ask, I want to ask the politicians this question: If you believe that peace is such such a powerful tool and such the way to go, why don't you go peacefully protest Iran and get them motherfuckers to right. come around to your right. to your view? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's let's peacefully sit in Afghanistan. You know what I'm saying? Why didn't you send peacekeepers over there? I mean, I ain't peacekeepers. Why didn't you just peacefully try to get Afghanistan Afghanistan to go along with your policies? Or better yet, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Iraq, Libya, or, or, North, or North Korea, North Korea, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? See. We're the only ones that, that that they push this whole peace shit off on. See, we got to understand that when Gandhi started doing that, Gandhi realized that the Indians at that time couldn't even couldn't even compete with the with the Europeans yeah. that was there. Right. He you know, knew that he know. had to get them out, so the only way he could get them out was do that. But right. I, I I wonder, I wonder. If India had power uh, somewhat comparable to in um, to England at that time, at mm-hmm. least strong enough to get him out of England, would he have been right. the same? Would he been using the same methods? See, because often, oftentimes, what happens is because I noticed this in wars in some of my studies, the only motherfuckers that sue for peace are the motherfuckers that's losing. Do you know that? That's right. Yeah, those only ones. The only ones that for peace. Is the ones that's losing. The ones that losing are the ones that ask for peace. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, look here, man. I'm gonna get off, man. I, know, I, gotta, I, know. Jump off. I gotta get up to. It's almost two o'clock. But, but I appreciate this, man. This is this is. I enjoy the stimulating the conversation. But I will say one thing, man. What's up? Is that you know never think that what you say and what you think. It's crazy. Think of it this way. Everybody else ain't caught up to your way of thinking. Oh, that's cool. I mean, you know, I got... See, it, it, I got the... I kind of put it. I got the mask in. But, 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 guess, but guess what? But guess what? Over time, if you go back over time to your beginning with your knowledge and everything and, and evolving, you can see 
where people have come around. Oh yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't it ain't that you're crazy. You just ahead of you just ahead of some people. Hey, I can dig it. I can dig it. But you know All right man. Hey, but you know what? To do this to do the job and stuff and do the shit that I've been doing, I honestly believe that it, there's some craziness in there. But crazy well, but hold on crazy doesn't necessarily well, mean out of your mind well, well when you when you're trying to when you're trying to wake up some sleepers from a dream it, it, it takes some crazy stuff to be saying oh yeah that's right you gotta shock <laughs> you gotta shock them you gotta, you gotta shock them to reality you know you gotta shock them to reality that's right but hey Mr. Trailer, hey man, thank you for stopping in. You're welcome oh, yeah. on the journey no anytime. Again. We do this again, every, man. I do this, I do this almost every Tuesday. It's rare that I don't do it. Um, I still got about another hundred um folk tales to go. Um, I think one of my daughters is gonna move in and, and actually a couple of my daughters probably move in and, and start taking on my show. I don't know. I don't know, okay. but either yeah. way. I'm, I'm gonna be happy because the, the the whole piece is like I tell people, I do this. I, I'm legacy building, man. I'm, I, I'm legacy building. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, right. I would love for somebody to come in and, and 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 help me organize this. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, man, it's it's more. Than, it's so much resources in this that if we right. figure out how to pull it out. So I want to thank you for joining me. You're welcome to come oh, yeah. back anytime. For those who want to support the journey, hit us up on our Ambit site. Check us out at Jeremy Journey Energy. Also, if you want to support, hit us up on our Patreon page. I'm going to post that up as well. Um, you can go to patreon.com forward slash GNJ. You know what I'm saying? Donate. Become a patron. You know what I'm saying? Like in the old days, you a baller. You got a few extra dollars. You want to throw it at us? Throw it at us so that we can go and make sure that our kids get what they need. So we can go and update our equipment so that we can go and get these videos popping off. Life is good right now. You know what I'm saying? But it always can be better. So with that, I say remember, your hustle builds muscle. And I'd like to thank y'all for joining us on the journey. Peace! Peace out.